You've probably never heard of Turkmenistan because it's one of the most isolated countries in the world and considered to be the North Korea of Central Asia. Mm. We traveled there a few years ago on our way from Europe to East Asia. It was very difficult to get in first and then when we got in we found out that this country has a lot of secrets to hide. Hey guys, I'm Julia, this is Sven. And this fluffy guy is Felix and together we travel all across the world. Sven and I have been to more than 60 countries and Felix has also been to 30 countries. Right now we are traveling around Europe in our vintage van. But a few years back when Felix wasn't even born, we hitchhiked all the way from Germany to China, which means we basically traveled overland. So we had to cross many, many countries and to get from Iran to Uzbekistan, we had to cross Turkmenistan. Back then when we applied for the Visa, we had no idea what kind of country Turkmenistan is, but we soon found out that it's pretty crazy because they have a crazy dictator with many rules and we kind of developed um, a fascination about these countries. That's why we also traveled to North Korea. If you like, you can watch our video linked here. And today we will share our story from our two crazy days in Turkmenistan. First up, to give you a little bit of background information, Turkmenistan is one of the Istan countries. So it is a country in Central Asia and these countries consist of Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan and Kazakhstan. And what makes this region of the world so special is that centuries ago it was the center of the ancient Silk Road. So the the middle of the trade routes between Europe and East Asia and all of those Istan countries they are also special for their crazy dictators and we will get to the Turkmen dictator as well in this video. Let's start with the first step, applying for a visa. We are from Germany and get German passports that are considered to be very strong so we don't need a visa for many countries but for Turkmenistan we did that's why we tried to apply for a visa in Istanbul when we went for the embassy and asked for the visa the man in the entrance hall just started laughing at us and from that point on we knew okay this country might be a bit weird <laughs> weird we then continued our journey to Iran and in the capital Tehran we applied again or we tried to and it took several weeks we ended up staying three weeks longer in iran than we actually planned we ran out of money because in iran you can't just um, take cash from um, an atm as a foreigner if you want to know more about our time in iran you can let us know in the comments because we stayed for six weeks in total in this beautiful country and we made so many awesome memories there and after waiting for such a long time to get the visa and lots of confusion Fusion and meeting many people who didn't get it we I don't know how but we finally got it a little background information applying for a visa for Turkmenistan is like um, a lottery game <laughs> because when you apply and even uh, pay the money given all your documents they reject most of the people and for uh, no reason whatsoever yeah and we met so many who got rejected but yeah we were lucky but <laughs> Yes! Yeah, this we got we reason. got angry as well <laughs> for that reason. So we got the visa and the only visa we actually could get at all was a five-day transit visa. So we got this, but we got it three days expired. So when we got the visa, we only had two days left to get from Tehran, so in the middle of Iran, to cross all of Turkmenistan as well. You wouldn't like to do that, would you? No, 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 no. It's too warm for him. At that point we thought, okay, that's kind of weird because why wouldn't they want us to see their country? When we crossed the border from Iran to Turkmenistan overland, uh, we were the only foreigners there. There were only locals traveling from one place to another. And in the transit bus, to get from the border crossing to a checkpoint, we met a man that talked to us and offered us to give us a ride to the capital Ashgabat. But later we found out that this man didn't meet us accidentally. He was actually from the government and they somehow wanted to make sure that we arrive in town. At a hotel. <laughs> Yes. So that we don't have the chance to see any other spots on our own. The first impression when we drove towards Ashgabat was crazy. We were so shocked because we expected 
I don't know, just a normal city in, in Central Asia, but we were wrong. Because you have to know Turkmenistan consists um, out of 70% desert and within this dry desert we suddenly saw a white town completely made out of marble. It kind of looked like an oasis. It was, everything was shiny and beautiful and we were like, what? Where did we end up? <laughs> and after this man from the bus or the government dropped us off in front of the hotel, we waited a few minutes for him to leave so we could get going towards our couch surfer because we were very lucky to organize a couch surfer before entering Turkmenistan. She was a young woman from Germany working at the university at that time and we were so lucky to meet up with her because due to her we got all those informations and all those crazy and funny stories about all this country. All the secrets! <laughs> yes! <laughs> so before even seeing more of the country, she already told us that their dictator Gulban Guli Bud Berdi Muhammadov, so sorry but his name is a bit complicated, <laughs> is kind of crazy. He has so many weird rules. He loves to collect Guinness World Records. He builds crazy buildings like an indoor ferris wheel. The largest in the world, world record. Yeah, but I'm not so sure how the view will be from an indoor ferris <laughs> wheel. <laughs> well, <laughs> and uh, in Ashgabat there's also the highest number of marble buildings in one place because basically every building is a marble building but no one actually lives in there. Most of these buildings are empty and the locals live kind of outside the city in yeah, not so nice buildings and they don't really have much money. Our coach surfer also told us that she basically don't has any access to internet. So sometimes during some random hours within the day the internet just turns off and on and she doesn't know when. Sometimes she's lucky so she can call her family but uh, most of the time she isn't. In total we have to say that Turkmenistan is a very restrictive country and there is no freedom of press or speech. It is considered to be one of the most dangerous countries to live in at the moment. And to understand how weird the behavior of this dictator actually is, there is another crazy example for it. So at one point of time he thought that his population might not be fit enough, so random thought, okay. And then he decided to build a hiking trail, I think it's called the, uh, the Trail of Health. <laughs> and <laughs> he said that every person of the whole country has to hike this trail at least once a year. And I think it's, uh, how long is it, 40 kilometers or something like that? It's quite long. Yeah, and so you have one day to hike this trail uh, once a year and <laughs> when he opened up the trail... Um, <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> When he opened the trail, he greeted all those people at the opening ceremony and people started hiking, except for himself. So <laughs> he decided to go into his helicopter, fly all the way across the trail and meet up with the people at the finish line again because he himself isn't that healthy either. So he wanted to take <laughs> care of his own, of his heart or something like that. And our coach Sefa also told us that at some random day that is not announced in advance, the president calls all students to walk the whole trail. So she also had to do it a few times already. Due to our almost already expired visa, we only had one day to explore the whole country or at least the capital where we were before we had to go onto our night train taking us to the border to Uzbekistan. And what we saw in Ashgabat was just so weird and random I would say. So think about a white city made completely out of marble but there are basically no people walking around. We went to huge squares and the only people who were there were cleaning ladies that cleaned the already clean streets and um, soldiers standing in front of the buildings. Whenever we stopped walking, some soldiers just came to us and said, oh, it's not allowed to stop you, you have to keep walking, keep walking, just move on, move on. And another crazy world record there is, uh, is that, um, keep in mind that Turkmenistan is 70% desert, there is the highest percentage of fountains in one place. So that is crazy because the country is very dry. Yeah. And some buildings look just so weird. They have a famous book that everyone has to read and even, of course, written from the dictator. And even when you want to get your driver's license, you have to answer questions about this book. This is so random. And one building looked like a book. The dental center looked like a tooth. Um, what else did they have? I think they had a meteorological center that looks like a rocket. And I don't know, and they have some other weird buildings like some 
some uh, some wedding building that looks so weird like an UFO <laughs> so you can walk there and have your wedding we also saw a wedding with those traditional costumes oh, <laughs> and during our day we didn't talk to any locals the only time we saw some was at an amusement park where young people walked around most of them were students wearing their uniforms and they looked quite happy but yeah um, we couldn't really communicate so I think everyone who lives there has to follow some very strict rules. I don't really know how much of the outside world they really see because not many tourists are around. In North Korea this is kind of different because uh, they have lots of tourist groups visiting and actually going around and um, locals th see tourists all the time. But I think in, yeah, in Turkmenistan it's, it's just different. It's much more restricted. I mean, it's crazy. Think about it. Turkmenistan seems to be more restricted than North Korea. It's... We didn't know that before entering there. So it, that blew our minds. Another crazy fact about the dictator, he is obsessed with horses. So they have this national horse, it's some kind of horse breed. I don't know what it's called, sorry about that for the horse people from you. But, uh, <laughs> but he's obsessed with them. And um, all those crazy and funny facts we also mentioned in another video about Turkmenistan. You can check out the video, we've linked it somewhere here oh, I, I don't know sorry <laughs> yeah and once our day in the country was over we had to catch the night train and it got dark very quickly we were sitting in front of the windows they put us in an isolated train um, cabin cabin where we couldn't talk, talk to anyone or again. see anyone and yeah uh, at the next morning we arrived in Uzbekistan but that is another story we were quite flashed from the short time we spent in Turkmenistan at that point it was crazy and somehow we are so fascinated by these countries because they are still so special and we didn't know anything about it before let us know if you knew that Turkmenistan is such a special country and that's it already from today's video we hope you liked it and if, if you if you did like it give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel actually so. we filmed this video twice before the first time our camera with all the footage on it gets stolen the second time we weren't happy with the results so now we are filming the third time so please <laughs> give it a thumbs up so see you again next week bye bye ciao ciao felix already fell asleep <laughs>